Hey everybody, Gary Fong here and wanted to do this follow-up video to answer a bunch of questions that came up with regards to the new uh, autofocus functions that I showed in a couple of my latest uh, YouTube broadcasts. Now, um, I typically get onto YouTube when I'm really excited about something and so when I played with the A9 <laughs> with the um, version 5.0 and the new AI tracking feature, it was something worth uh, pretty much shouting about. And all of the photographic press that has been reviewing that have been saying the same thing. Uh, same thing with the 6400, even though when they showed it to us, they put the two side by side. So it was kind of like having a Ferrari and um, I don't want to say BMW because I don't make BMW. Well, anyway, a Ferrari and a Buick. A Buick, yeah. It's like having a Ferrari and a Buick side by side. Um, but the A6400 was quite remarkable. And... Uh, um, so I want to go through and talk about, talk about, I'm becoming Canadian, uh, the I autofocus, uh, evolution and the schedule for the rollout, because there's a lot of confusion as to what cameras do what. And I wanted to put this down in one document so you could see it. And I have that right here. <clears throat> so we have, um, I'll just call it I autofocus evolution. And I collected this uh, information from Sony. And so you can see here that uh, the one with the most features would be the Sony A9. <clears throat> so it has IAF, which they all do in the entire body of all the alphas and uh, these cyber shots that are listed here, the current ones. Um, but these guys right here have autofocus IF, so IAF in continuous all the way down except for the A7 II, all of these guys have that. And then uh, on the APS bodies, the 6300, but not the 6000 or the 5100. And there's other uh, other really differences there too, because like on the 6000, IAF isn't available to you unless you custom uh, configure one of the custom buttons and things like that. So um, they've done a little bit more with uh, the making it a priority in the interface. And then um, on the RX100s, uh, the newest models, they do have IAF with AFC, but what they don't have is the new uh, real-time tracking, and that's the, um, again, there's so many different names for it, real-time tracking, AF, uh, it's AI tracking, um, I, I wish it would stick to one name when in communications, but <clears throat> so let's look at what we've got here. The ones that have it are the Sony A9 uh, real-time tracking and the brand new Sony A6400. So you might kind of go, okay, well, what happens to us if we're not uh, part of that uh, family? Is it going to be up upgraded? And so then I did contact Sony and ask them what the firmware releases are. And so for the Sony A9, right now your Sony A9 will not do predictive uh, AI tracking. But how cool is it? You just do the uh, firmware procedure and uh, restart your camera and then the menus change and the menus change into now giving you the ability to do AI tracking. So that's going to come in March. Um, I'm glad I don't have an A9 right now because I spent two days shooting with the A9 and uh, having that AI uh, tracking was pretty freaking cool. Um, it also has, it's going to come out with these new features, Evolved IAF, which allows you to choose right or left eye selection. Um, Real-time tracking in continuous. And uh, that, of course, is what you saw in my demo at the beach and on the basketball court. And then connectivity via Imaging Edge Mobile. Now, this is not just a rebranding, but it's kind of rebranding. You used to be able to do this kind of stuff in Play Memories Mobile. Um, Sony, I think when they started out with the uh, mirrorless, you know, they were kind of like the Nex, NEX cameras, and it was kind of all fun and games. And they had the toy camera kind of tool on there, and you could you know, kind of do stuff, but it was called Play Memories, right? And so now that they've got the fastest lenses, fastest responding lenses, fastest autofocus in the world, they will be showing up at Super Bowls and at the Olympics, but it's going to be kind of weird to have the press photographer sitting there and communicating through uh, downloading to his phone through um, Play Memories with toy camera and, you know, the, those other things. So they've give, given it a, a completely polish. We saw a demo of it, but it also will um, interface directly with your FTP servers. So you'll have the instantaneous shooting, uploading to your mobile, and then uploading to your FTP server. And that's something that they wanted to do because uh, they are getting into the more professional thing. You can't get more professional than the Sony A9. 
you, when you look at the price, you'll know why. It's, it's uh, worth it if you are an action photographer. Now, if you are a um, video, actually, the um, A6400 has some features that... The, well, actually, the A9 is kind of stripped of features for video in terms of like uh, picture profiles, like the log functions and things like that. Um, but what's really cool about the new 6400, getting tiny bit off topic, is that it has HLG or hybrid log gamma. Hybrid log gamma is a new way of actually <coughs> uh, transporting <coughs> your log files so that the here we go, technical. This is why my demographic is overwhelmingly males uh, over the age of whatever. Um, hybrid log gamma allows you to uh, transmit the f uh, your video file in log, flat log, but then it will uh, apply the LUT on top of it. So that enables you. Now, this is something that's really kind of freaking cool if you are a filmmaker or a cinematographer that enables you to switch the LUTs later. So let's just say, for example, you made something that got out on Netflix and you look at it and you go, oh my gosh, that just looks absolutely terrible. I want to change something about how that looks. You can just basically upload a proxy LUT and, um, and that will, that will, uh, get transmitted straight to your television or whatever broadcast device, uh, you know, computer or whatever. Also, what's really kind of interesting is on the A6400, it has proxy recording. So it will uh, do your um, big, fat, honking files uh, shot in uh, S-Log, but also give you a proxy recording that you would then be able to use for your editing. How cool is that? Much, much smaller files, the ability to do that, and that's all coming up in the future. So the firmware release uh, for the Sony a7R 3 and the Sony a7 III, which is coming up one month later in April, will be the evolved eye autofocus, but will not have right-left eye selection. Uh, I still haven't figured out why that's important. Um, I did ask and had something to do with... Uh, I don't know if you have one eye that's cooler looking or something like that. Um, for me personally, I would have preferred if they would have had close eye focus, right? Because doesn't that make sense? If you go like this when you want this eye in focus and not the other eye, that's just me. But um, but this allows you to, and oh, by the way, and it is um, on there as You'll see in the demo in Unleashing the Power of Your Sony A6400, it is the eye that uh, belongs to the subject, not stage right, audience right. Wait, not audience right, that's right, not audience right, stage right. Peter Frampton taught me the difference. It's like stage right is when you're on stage and it's to the right. Audience right is when you're in the audience and looking at the stage and it's audience right. Okay, so anyway, um... Having said all that, the A7R3 and the A7III do not have that feature, but it does have animal eye autofocus. So how cool is that if you're like a wildlife photographer and you got the 400 millimeter 2.8 lens on and you're tracking a, a cheetah, right? Going, uh, whatever. The A7R3 is not going to track as fast, but it will nail the eyeball for animals. So if you're a wildlife photographer, that's pretty freaking cool because nothing like you know, getting a really great shot of maybe a bald eagle perched on a nest and getting the beak in focus, but not the eye. Um, and then it also now has built-in intervalometer. And uh, that's actually something that I saw on the Sony A9. So I'm going to have to ask about that because I know that that is a feature that is in the Sony A9 when I played with it. Uh, no, wait, take that back. A6400 had the intervalometer. So a lot of the features that you're seeing that they put out, here's my guess on it. Sony, when they were putting together the 6400, they said, okay, everyone on your off your workbenches, show me what you've got. And so everyone said, well, we've got this ability to take the data off the sensor in a, a split uh, point, you know, whatever, of a uh, fraction of the speed of the old ones. So why don't we do continuous IAF? And I actually met the... Uh, uh, the autofocus engineer, the guy who's, you know, uh, responsible for autofocus and, uh, which is kind of a big honor cause it's kind of a cool job. But anyway, he, um, he, uh, you know, told me about how that, that whole thing works. And so they, they 
kind of put together. And then they have to talk to the interface people, which is interesting. Like I went to uh, Sony headquarters in Japan to uh, sit down with the, um, with the uh, engineers and uh, they, uh, among one of the many things that they thought was important to bring me was a button simulator. So there were five different uh, trigger buttons, and they asked me which one was my favorite. Uh, this one too squishy or not, not too squishy? You know, so um, they, they really get this interface down, which to me, I'm not really sure why they haven't got down the, um, the crazy menu thing going on. Um, we have a new feature coming out on Android and iPhone, which we've had for quite a while, is called the Feature Finder, where when you just want to find out where IAF, IAF on the A6000 is, you just basically punch that into the search function, and it will tell you it's on the fourth tab, six page over, line seven, and you can get to it real quick, and it'll show you also um, what it does. So anyway, that is the firmware release rollout of the um, the new cameras. And uh, hopefully that'll clear up a little bit of confusion because yes, there is anxiety. I just bought this uh, camera and I'm seeing all these cool features and I know they're upgrading the A9, but why not the other ones? And I think actually the reason why you're not seeing the upgrade for the other ones is because they made it for the 6400 and they said, this is such a cool feature. Eventually all of their cameras will convert um, which, of course, is the built-in upgrade path that Apple is so famous for. Get the iPhone 8 or the 10X or the Pro 10X or the Xtreme X10, uh, 11, 12, or whatever. Um, the same thing kind of like with Sony is that they will unroll for all of their future cameras, I'm sure of it, the new AI tracking. But once they do that, um, you know, then it's um, the hardware will be much, much faster one of the things it has to do to be able to perform that function is to be able to clear the data really fast. So that's uh, that's going to be coming up. But they probably went, hey, look, we made this for the A6400. What hardware do we have now can actually perform the same function of clearing the data off of the uh, sensor so fast? And, of course, that's the A9. And then that is really, really important for things like predictive, not predictive, See, predictive's bad, right? Because if you're doing predictive autofocus, that means if a race car is coming at you, then you know by the time the camera responds to your click of the button, the race car will be here. In um, the AI tracking, the camera will not shoot unless the subject is in focus. And the crazy thing about it is it will not shoot until the eyeball is in focus, even in playing sports. So that's kind of a dream come true. I can talk this until I'm blue in the face, but when it gets out into the hands of consumers and sports photographers, you'll see a massive, massive uh, envy or change to the brand because... I've never seen anything like it. I can't. My own human eye just doesn't seem like it can focus as fast as the A9 with the AI tracking. Okay. So anyway, um, make sure to subscribe to this channel. And um, we come here whenever there's big news, big updates, or things like that. Again, I'm not a Sony artisan. I'm not an employee. I'm just a friend of Sony. And I admire good engineering. And uh, I'm not paid by Sony. I'm just a, a fan. Okay. So call me a fanboy. Anyway, um, hope this helps. Or eases some anxiety or I don't know what it would do if if you anyway whatever it does I'm just being truthful okay thanks for watching